Hello, I'm Yasmin Alibi Brown, and for the next hour, I'll be telling you the story of two iconic sisters, Lata Mangeshkar and Asha Bosley, two of the finest and most prolific vocalists in the business, revered by Bollywood fans the world over. Trendy young Indians sitting outside one of Mumbai's famous theatres, playing a popular Indian game, singing one Bollywood song after another, as they do often. That's like an all-time thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A hundred years old, Bollywood is a multi-million pound marvel, a global spectacle. Its stars appear on the covers of Time and Forbes magazines and are even more popular than Hollywood stars like Tom Cruise and Julia Roberts. But behind the glam, the glitz, the kitsch and the money lies an even more incredible story of two sisters revered by Bollywood fans the world over, yet largely unknown by most in the West. They've sold more records than the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, and came on the scene long before anyone had even heard of Elvis Presley. But who are they? Lata Mangeshkar, or Lataji as she's fondly called, and her younger sister, Asha Bosle, or Ashaji. They're playback singers, Two women now in their 80s who've sung the songs lip-synced by actresses in the movies for generations. Devrad Sanyal, managing director of Universal Music. We run uh, the Rolling Stones catalogue. They celebrated being a band for 50 years this year. The Mangeshka sisters have been around for 70 years. 965 films have both Ashaji and Lataji, or only Lataji, or only Ashaji. I think the sum of all parts of everyone else would tend to mount to a number like that. Lata and Asha have been my pop idols for as long as I can remember. They tower over other favourites, Elvis, Eric Clapton and Joni Mitchell. During my childhood in Uganda, my mum listened to sad Lata songs through the night as she sewed clothes for customers on an old singer sewing machine. Japani, our African kitchen servant, had his own favourites, mainly Asha numbers, which he didn't understand but sang all day long. The beauty of the voices overcame all barriers, including language. Lata Mangeshkar arrived in 1943, followed closely by Asha. Their voices, though very different from each other, are mellow, melodious, intensely feminine and seemingly ageless. During the dying days of the British Raj, they raised the spirit of the colonized nation with freedom songs. Independence came. Optimism rose, then fell, and Indians experienced wars, assassinations, corruption and economic stagnation. Through it all, the sisters delivered pleasure and solace, rode the waves of history and surfed the dramas of day-to-day -day life. They gave wings to both happiness and unhappiness. made emotions fly high and dive deep. Every post-independence prime minister has met and honoured them. Every South Asian on the planet knows of Lataji and Ashaji so we may not agree on which one is the better singer.
fast-paced and booming, modern India still has time to revere the sisters and their immortal songs. Their voices have become part of the Indian DNA. I went to Mumbai to talk to those who've worked with them or have followed their remarkable careers. Sadly, Ashaji, who had recently lost her daughter to suicide, was unable to meet us, but we were lucky enough to be granted a rare interview with Lataji. She invited us to her home, to the same modest, simply furnished apartment where the family has lived for decades. No burly bodyguards or fawning entourage surrounds her. Wearing a plain yet elegant white sari as always, her famously long hair in two neat plaits reaching down to her feet, she quietly slipped into the room. Diamonds twinkled on her earlobes, the only sign of affluence. I'd never imagined that I'd get to meet the great lady whose songs have got me through good times and bad. I was nervous and excited. Her smile and soft voice quickly calmed my nerves and the atmosphere in the room. Her niece Rachna was there to translate the answers Lataji gave in beautifully enunciated Hindi. The sisters were born into a musical and theatrical family. Their father, Master Dinanath Mangeshkar, was a respected classical actor, musician and teacher. I singing start singing when I was five years old. It was a since her dad used to teach a lot of students, there was one student there who was singing, but he wasn't doing it correctly. So this five-year-old child actually remembered what was taught to him and went and corrected him. That is when the father realized that I have this huge ball of talent right at home. <laughs> so that's how it began. <laughs> Her beloved father died suddenly when she was just 13, leaving the family virtually penniless. As the eldest of five children, Lata had little choice but to go out into the big wide world and find work. She set off for Bombay, as it was then, to the land of movies where dreams could come true. It wasn't the dumb thing for young girls from good homes to follow such a path, but there was money to be made for someone as young and talented as she was. Lata's biographer, Harish Pimani. There was no time for sentimentality or even um, emotional outbursts. She took up acting, because that was the first thing that was offered. She knew she was no actress, and she hated it. She acted in some five or six films, and then, since these Every movie has at least six musical numbers. Danny Boyle understood their power of evocation. 
the song Jai Ho is an abiding memory of his brilliant film Slumdog Millionaire. Lord Meghna Desai is a hard-nosed economist and a soft-hearted lover of Hindi cinema. One of the great things about Hindi film songs is that they have been written by outstanding poets. Hindustani poets, basically. And after all, if you were a professional poet, there's, there's no way of making a living. But writing a film song was a very lucrative thing. And so the poetry in this was exquisite. I carry in my head, as it were, hundreds of songs, literally hundreds of songs, word perfect. Often films are absolutely terrible stories, terrible plots, nothing. But songs were what made the film. We had the advantage of being able to listen beautifully sung and composed songs with marvellous words. Lyricist and composer Javed Akhtar explains how playback singing evolved in Hindi cinema. In the beginning, the actors used to sing themselves. But then, after a little while, we discovered that it is possible to take somebody's voice and make the other person lip-sync it. And that became a fine art. It has happened in the West also, obviously not on a regular basis. Like in My Fair Lady, Rex Harrison did not sing himself, but it was uh, someone else's voice. We had great singers like Lata Mangeshkar and Muhammad Rafi and Mukesh and Talat Mahmood and Mannade. Then Asha Bosle joined later. And these were the people who made playback singing an art in itself. They eliminated the distance between singing and acting. All of India's pop music comes from films. We have very few groups, you know, like the Beatles or the Stones, that rock groups, etc., that make a name for themselves as performers. And the role of these singers is, is as central to the Indian film industry as any of the actors, or for that matter, directors and producers, that have made films. And do they then become as famous as the actors? Oh, absolutely. Playback singers are not only as famous as the actors, but in many cases uh, their fame endures long beyond the success of the actors because actors come and go. But singers like the Mangeshka sisters are people whose careers have spanned over six and a half decades. So I don't think any actor can lay claim to that kind of fame. Kabir Bedi, veteran Bollywood star. I asked Indian journalist and film expert Shashi Baliga the reasons for Lata's fame and success. Composer Madan Mohan said we once set out all across India and we never found anybody better than Lata. So the truth is that she did simply have the best voice in the country. But isn't it also true, once they'd said this is the ultimate voice, different kinds of voices couldn't be part of that marketplace. But for, for good reason. One is that that was the profile of the Hindi film heroine at that time. Now you have many more voices coming in because the roles have changed. Hindi cinema has changed. It's allowed for greys. There were no greys in the time that Lata sang. So she fitted that profile perfectly. Lata's profile also reflected the many changes India went through. Her voice had profundity and was the soundtrack to the serious challenges faced by the nation. But did she herself play an active part in the independence movement? Harish Pamani again. Even when uh, the big brother was watching, when uh, the rulers, the then rulers, would clamp strict censorship... She sang a song called Vande Mataram, which means I bow to you, O motherland. Uh, this was yet not allowed. It's rather like I remember when Louis Armstrong was once denounced by one of the black activists 
for having sold out. Lord Desai again. Then the rest of the black leadership said, no, Louis Armstrong is Louis Armstrong. There is no political dimension in Louis Armstrong. He is what he is, and we are all proud of him. You know, you just cannot relate that person to a political grid. And Lata and Asha are like that. And, of course, occasionally people have tried to leverage their names. But they have not pandered to any of that. They have been very, very strict about it. There were always patriotic songs in India and sung in the movies. But I don't believe Bollywood was ever overtly or actively or aggressively political. It was really a business for profit. And if patriotic songs sold and became popular and it was profit in the producer's pocket, they recorded them. I can't understand. <laughs> I think I can't understand. I can't understand. Lataji is measured and thoughtful, a devout Hindu, a woman who sings intoxicating songs about love, but never married and never had children. Instead, she took charge of her extended family. Asha was the wild one. She eloped at 16, divorced, and became a single mother. She was sensual and sexy, not afraid to speak her mind, and relished singing daring lyrics. I once saw her perform in a packed Wembley stadium, dancing, swaying like an upright cobra alongside muscly, oiled young men. I asked Harish Bimani how Asha managed to come out of Lata's looming shadow and make her name. We gained independence in 1947, and uh, in nine, it was in 1949 that Lata Mangeshkar became what we call today a legend. 22 hit singles in one year by a new singer. This is unheard of. All producers, all music directors, composers would rush to her. Now, she obviously could not sing all the songs. They knew that the next best or equally good was Asha Bosley. But if you are going to another person, it better be another style. And she was quite sure that she didn't want to simply follow in her footsteps. And uh, their natures are different. They're siblings, yes, but they're two different people. And believe me, their 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 voices and their style of styles of singing also represent that. They are both tremendously strong women. Shashi Baliga again. Perhaps because they had to be. They had to be professionally and personally. Lata, for example, has fought with a lot of composers, quite a few composers during her reign, within about five years of so of starting her career, Lata was pretty much deciding who she would work with and what she would do. And the other problem was that a lot of the singers tried to be Lata clones. That's working, so let me go down that path. Why would you take a clone when the original is around? It was only those who used their own voices and nurtured their own personalities that Asha did, who succeeded. Shamir Tandon, a young, dynamic, present-day music director who's recorded many a song with both sisters. Lata Ji was the supreme nightingale. But when Asha Ji was trying to make a dent 
and snatch away a few songs from her sister. She said, if I'm going to sing sweet, sweet, nice, nice songs like my sister, why would people call me? So let me create a product differentiation, a vocal product differentiation. And that is what she did. So she is like very experimental. She loves doing fun things. So what she did was she started getting some little westernization in singing, which Lataji is bereft of in her thinking process because she's very Indian. So then people said, ha, ah, okay, if there is any song which has little westernization Call Asha Bosley. So that's how she started getting her songs. Uh, Asha was the headstrong one. Lata was the responsible one. They're both really very opposite personalities. And um, when Asha eloped, Lata didn't really like it, but she was a sister, so she supported her. And of course, they did all this in the early days and during a very different time when women had a certain position, sexism in the industry, so many barriers were broken, weren't they? Uh, yes, and on her own terms. A lot of resentment, certainly, from other singers. But it's like saying, why does Tom Cruise get all the blockbusters? This is a creative field, and out there, everybody has to fight. Shashi Baliga. Bollywood journalist Bharti Pradhan explained how they managed to stay at the top of their game for so long. But surely there must have been many other playback hopefuls over the years. It is true that uh, Lata Mangeshkar and Asha Bhosle uh, were very, very particular about having the music directors to themselves and not letting them experiment with other voices. But having said that, I mean, it was. It, it used to be called the Mangeshkar Monopoly at one time. It was a cliche that was used all over the place at one time in the 70s. But um, having said that, I can't recall a single singer who was as good as them. Because it's very easy for, a, for an average singer to come up and say, look, they're not letting me sing because they have a monopoly. But the fact was, not one of them was as good as, the, as these two sisters. Because, I, I mean, name me one. There were a whole lot of them, but they were all very limited. They were not as versatile. So why would a music director want to anger the two sisters and take a voice that's not going to suit every song that he makes? So they were really not as versatile. And between the two sisters, I think they could sing every kind of song that was made in the world. Join me in a couple of minutes for part two of The Nightingales of India. The BBC was. Hello, I'm Yasmin Alibai Brown. Welcome back to the Nightingales of India. With the presence of Lata Mangeshkar and Asha Bhosle, there was hardly any room left for any other singer. That was the problem. If you are that talented, then it is difficult to fall by the wayside. That is how show business works all over the world. That uh, sometimes uh, it happens that people come and uh, they are on the horizon for a short while and, they, uh, and then they vanish. It happens all over the world. Um, but the fact remains that... Uh, uh, with all due respect to all those who came and went away, <laughs> uh, the kind of talent these two sisters can boast of is of different league. Yes, some different voice would come and you will enjoy the difference of the voice and uh, for a couple of songs perhaps. And then you will go back to Lata Mangeshkar or Asha Bhosle. The masters of Indian classical music also respect Lata Mangeshkar. They were so good, so capable so versatile. Any kind of song is within their range. Any song. Javed Akhtar, lyricist and screenwriter. Throughout their careers, there's been much gossip of sibling rivalry. I asked Shashi Baliga whether it was real or imagined. When people talk of Lata uh, standing in the way of other singers and not letting them come up, uh, 
you've really got to remember that a nobody handed her anything on a platter she worked her way purely on talent she didn't make things very easy for her sister either she didn't step aside and say okay asha you take this song no asha had to do in the beginning of her career she had to do a lot of the leftovers the you know sexy songs and cabaret songs that lata would not do so if she hasn't had it easy and her sister hasn't had it easy and they both really worked their way to the very top and they've stayed there for decades you can understand why she may think why should i step aside and you know let someone else in if they're good enough they will come up features of their success is their absolute professionalism and dedication the one thing that i have learned from them on a repeated basis is that there is an ocean of difference between singing and playback singing everybody is a great singer because singing is a function of singing in key singing in the right tempo but playback singing is getting into the character of the actual character in the film they actually live the actress in their head they actually meet the actress they spend time with the actress so when you listen to Asha ji singing for one of these actresses X it will be completely different from singing for an actress Y so it's like a computer chip installed here so you just sort of press that button and say okay today i'm going to be singing for this actress they actually bring much more value to the composer's composition and that's why they're any music director's dream i remember going to a recording in the 70s uh where lata mangeshkar was singing and this was at a very famous recording studio in tardeo a uh, huge uh, studio those days there weren't that many electronics and all these musicians were lined up you know um you know 50 60 of them and um lata had come in and um she took a position at the microphone and uh, she pulled out a crumpled piece of paper uh which with the lyrics of the song which she had taken down over the phone and the music director went around telling the musicians what they should do and they were then following that and lata was singing along with so them they had these kind of rehearsal sessions and it staggered me to see this because i knew that in the west when a song is recorded everyone has printed musical sheets the lyrics of the thing have been talked about and agreed you know perhaps weeks before and here she was literally reading off a scrap of paper uh with musicians that were improvising and creating at the same time and within 5 hours she had recorded an absolutely breathtaking song One day I called them at 2 o'clock and Lata ji came and said you know why I have come I've just come to tell you that I'm not well and she took my hand and put it on her forehead and said you know I'm I have fever so I said ma'am why did you even come because she would come 30 miles away from where our studio is because Mumbai is a, a large city and with a lot of traffic so she actually drove down for almost 2 hours to reach me just to tell me that I am running fever please permit me not to dub your song today permit me to dub your song another day so i said you could have done this on the phone we are in an era of mobile phones she said you know if i would have said this on the phone you would have said look she is a legend she is acting funny she is throwing a tantrum just because i am a nincompoop new music director she is taking me for granted she said i don't want you to feel that when she goes on the mic she tells me all the time you're the fifth generation music director i'm working with so my child don't get scared if you're not happy scold me raise your voice we singers need to be treated this way otherwise we won't deliver what you want 
In today's era, a lot of these singers, they come, before they come, they ask the music director, what time am I leaving the studio? I need to go for another take. You know, I have a date to go for. Uh, or they're on the mic and they're actually SMSing their girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. All of this you won't see in the Mangeshka sisters ever. They're very true to their art. When I sing a song, When she sings, she's so consumed by the song that nothing else matters. Be it the world, whether she's getting any money for it, any monetary benefits, whether the song is going to become famous or people are going to appreciate it. She is just focused on her singing and she's in that song. I asked Shashi Baliga, Javed Akhtar and Shamir Tandon about the quality of the voices that distinguishes the two sisters. Most would agree that Lata has the purer voice. You know, she has purity and she has innocence. In a sense, very much like the Hindi film heroine, who needs to seduce but also be a little innocent and uh, virginal, at least at the time that she was in Hindi films, perhaps not these days. She has that innocence and purity that appeals. Asha is a far earthier far more sensual, which is why she also did the kind of songs that Lata did not want to do. Obviously, both of them have their own individuality, and their individuality that reflects in the voices can be seen in their personality too. Lata Ji is a very sedate, uh, staid, very dignified, poised person uh, who arouses a lot of respect in you. When you look at her, when you meet her, a kind of respect and awe and admiration uh, overwhelms you. But when you meet uh, Asha Bosle, then tremendous admiration and attraction and interest generates in you. Because she is a person who is bubbly, who is spontaneous, who can say anything without meaning any malice at all, who is uh, full of life and uh, devil-may-care kind of person. While Lataji would weigh every word because she knows that I am Lata Mangeshkar. If I say anything which can hurt somebody, I should not and so on so forth. She weighs every word. The truth is that Ashaji is slightly higher on her range. The sheer range of her voice is slightly more. She almost does three octaves. Three octaves while Latha Didi does about two and a half octaves. So that's the only difference, apart from also the versatility of Ashaji, which is slightly more than Lathaji. That's why you'll see Ashaji doing a lot of cabarets, and also the regular romantic songs and item songs and dance songs. In the earlier days, some rock and roll songs started coming into Bollywood. They started choosing Ashaji over uh, Lathaji. Even some songs uh, where a word or two of English started coming into the poetry. Because earlier poetry was very, very chaste, you know, like very Urdu and Hindi. But then slowly a couple of English words started per percolating in the language. So then they would say, okay, let's call Ashaji, not Lataji. Songs which had a smile, you know, a laughter. She's a pioneer in bringing these concepts in singing, which Lataji never did. Even things like breath techniques, you know. Aja, aja, main hu pyaar tera, la, 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 inkar tera. Now, oh, aja, 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 aja. So this is Asha Bosle for you. Because very the composer, sexy. yeah, very sexy. Very the sexy. composer knew that Lataji would probably build a wall and say, hey, let's just do, oh, oh aja, ah, aja, ah, aja, ah, ah. She would do, she wouldn't do, ah, aja, ah, aja, ah, aja, ah, aja, ah, aja, you know?
And even things like, you know, whenever some kind of morality comes in, like Tawaf, a prostitute, a singing for a prostitute. So Lataji would prefer to be just the singer for the heroine in the film, for the lead actress who would be a good, good girl, not for the prostitute in the film, not for someone who's a bar dancer. So Ashaji chose to sing those songs and she delivered them so well. So while Lataji would sing for all the good girls doing the good, the wife of the home, she would be the other woman. So Ashaji would sing for the other woman in the house. <laughs> These two sisters have been the primordial go-to place for every single singer, every single, whether male or female. Devraj Sanyal of Universal Music in India. If you listen to Lataji even today, at 85, she still has the voice of a 16-year-old. Ashaji continues to surprise everyone. And these are examples of people who've sung for grandmother, mother, and granddaughter. So they sang for the grandmother in the good old 40s and 50s. They sang for the mothers, the mother variety in the 70s, 80s, and, and so have you. And then today's, today's kids. And they're still as relevant. Essentially, we had great music directors and they were making popular music. And it was popular mu music coming from the East as opposed to popular music coming from the West. So those that had a, a more Eastern or non-Western kind of sensibility would relate very easily to the creations of Indian music directors. And Lata's voice and Asha's voice and the voice of great male playback singers were known to these foreign audiences, Indian audiences living abroad. It was part of a much larger sort of social happening of the time and continues down to this day. A sellout Lata Mangeshka tribute show at the Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan in London. On offer is a repertoire of favorites sung by singer Maya Deepak. It's packed with British Asian fans. World music is now hugely popular across the UK, and Bollywood films are no longer confined to Asian audiences. But there were hardly any non-Asians in the auditorium. These legendary sisters, the Nightingales of India, have made little impact on American and European sensibilities. Lord Desai again. The difficulty is that just as a Maria Callas would not go across an Indian audience, it was very difficult to be able to sort of convey what joy Lata Mangeshkar Rasha Bosle can convey to the listener. And to that extent, there are barriers. It's just like people say, you can never translate something fully. The whole context has to be understood. Of course, the diaspora has brought all that music here with them. And to some extent, you, you kind of spread around the influence. You take your friends and make them listen to this thing. But eventually, it's inside you. Nitin Soni, the British musician and composer, grew up listening to his parents' Bollywood records. He's a great admirer of the musical skills of Lata Mangeshkar in particular. If you listen to Inhi Lagune, because it's such a, a stunning song on so many levels, you have all the complexity and the virtuosity of the instrumentation and the very fact that you've got this gorgeous synergy between what's going on with the footwork of the Kathak dancing. There's quite a complex flurry at the beginning, and yet her vocal just is so effortless and graceful over the top of this piece. There's a transcendence that she has to her voice where you don't sit there and, like you do with some of the great Indian classical singers, marvel at the technique. You're sitting there and you're in the moment. To me and millions of others, these sisters are among the finest singers in the world. 
They've been acknowledged as the most recorded artists in music history. At the height of their careers, they perform to full houses all over the globe. Yet even I find it hard to understand and explain how they were able to sing for actresses as young as 20, well into their 70s. The thing that is so astonishing for me is that you see new films with young, gorgeous actresses, actually quite westernized actresses now, and the voice is still that of these elderly women singing with a voice which could be a 23-year-old, 24-year-old. How does that happen? Okay, let me ask you a question in return. If you didn't know it was Lata or Asha, would you think it was a 70-year-old woman singing? No, not at all. That's the thing. That's there the you miracle. have the answer. They, their voices are eternally young. And there's so many songs that people listen to, they have no clue which movie it came from or which scene it was from. So at that point, it doesn't matter how old the singer is. Think Tina Turner, right? And the other half of the answer is that sometimes in Bollywood, anything goes. So <laughs> there it is. There's no other more complicated answer. It is the one cinema that has propagated the national language more than any amount of government funding or programs possibly do. It is the one cinema that has always propagated tolerance and peace between communities. It is the one cinema that has upheld the ideal of love marriage in a country that believes in arranged marriage. It is a cinema that has been a binding social force, not only for Indians living here, but Indians in the diaspora. And then if you add that to Bangladeshis, the Pakistanis, etc., they have united a subcontinent through this cultural ethos of the songs that they sing and the industry that they represent. Hollywood music is the biggest, uh, mm, you can say, influence. Yeah. You know, means we get to experience all the genres within the realm of Bollywood. Mm. And of course, when it comes to Bollywood, Lataji and Ashaji is, you know, the two names you cannot talk about Bollywood music unless you talk about. You know, yeah, it's not complete. It's player. incomplete. The thing that is astonishing for us is these old ladies, which mm -hmm. they are, mm -hmm. are singing to these young actresses, mm -hmm. and their voices are still so yeah. fresh, so young. I think that's the kind of uh, astonishment that the Western people feel, you know, the community feels about Lataji and Ashaji's voices. The basis of these two singers have been classical music. Because when you practice, you're taught that how, how you know, you can keep your voice younger for longer. There's been so much change since you started singing. You know, from full 40 people instruments to... 100 people. 100 people. To now machines. Yes. <laughs> but you have adjusted, you have accepted this change. Is that been difficult? Thora difficult hai. Difficult kyun hai? Earlier when they used to sing, it was like, along with the 100 odd musicians, she and her male uh, duet colleague, whoever it was, they all sang together and they were in sync with each other. Nowadays what happens is even if you make one mistake, it's just like one word which is dubbed. So in the process, though it's technically advanced, the soul is lost somewhere. Their world has certainly changed immeasurably, yet the sisters are unfazed by that. Now 84, Lata has stopped playback singing almost entirely, but Asha is still surprising everybody. She's now a judge on Indian Idol and is also a successful restaurateur. My name is Malini Agarwal and I am a celebrity blogger. I run a blog called MissMalini.com. Of late, the interesting thing is Asha Bosley is now on Twitter. You can follow her at Asha Bosley and she tweets. 
people love her and they love to tell you know talk to her and send her messages and you know tell her what their favorite songs are so I think she's really bridging the gap so I'm gonna just uh, put my phone on which usually is not allowed and tell you what uh, Asha Bosley has been tweeting about recently so she tweeted FYI Asha has been voted best Indian restaurant in Dubai by Time Out three years in Michelin Guide UK thank you for all your support so I guess she's opened a restaurant in Dubai which I wouldn't have known had I not been following her on Twitter. She's holding a cooking class and that she's so passionate about food. Clearly, she's created a whole brand around Asha, which is more than the singing. Not to be outdone, Lataji has launched her own new record label, LM Music. I say laga, because now there are record companies here. She started her own record label, LM Music, because she felt that the, the present, all the current music companies have a lot of rules and regulations. By the time you produce an album, the artist doesn't have the freedom to actually come out with what they really thought of. So then they have to bend rules. Whereas with her label, she's saying, I want to give the artist full freedom to come out with what they believe in. It's a company by an artist for an artist. These are people who, when you see, when they speak with you, and some, for someone like me, I'm not speechless that often. You'll just, you'll just keep quiet, out of just pure reverence and respect. Because who else do you know? I mean, I met Mick Jagger because of Super Heavy and some stuff we're doing together, and I thought, man, this is it. This is Mick Jagger. He is the ultimate, he is the dude's dude. He's wearing his little pink jacket and his pink shoes, and you know, I shook his hand, and I'm like, I have met Mick Jagger. And, but I could have a conversation with him. And I said, what a big fan I am of his and how I have every single record, including the bootlegs that he's ever done. And of course, being Universal's MD and having access to their music and seeing them several times in concert, I thought was, was it for me. But when you meet these two ladies, the level of respect and humility that you're surrounded by is, is incomparable. It's the truth. That's, that's, really, that's really the aura that is the Mangeshka sisters. I know that Aji isn't singing much now, but they're very adaptable, aren't they, in different ways? Oh, yes. I mean, I think they have passed that stage. You cannot praise Lata Mangeshkar. I mean, it will sound stupid to say that she's a very good singer. <laughs> you don't say Shakespeare is a very good writer. So, same way, I mean, they don't, don't need any praise. Their name is the ultimate praise. If you call somebody Lata Mangeshkar, what more you can say? There is no doubt the sisters are absolutely committed to their art, and that explains their legendary success. But I really hadn't expected such an iconic songstress to be as receptive and open-minded as Lataji was, young at heart and in voice. Lataji, please tell me, who are the singers you admire? Ah, uh, Nat King Cole, my favorite. Really? Yes. Why? I like his singing style and voice is very good. When she got to know that Nat King Cole had passed away, she actually broke down. She actually broke down into tears, yeah. And was I dreaming or did I really sing with one of the great nightingales of India? <laughs> You've been listening to The Nightingales of India with me, Yasmin Alibai Brown. The program was produced by Mohini Patel.